Hope you're doing well. Okay, so this is the last night before we put our side skins on. So we wanted to share with you all the things that we did before we put the side skins on. As you can um, see, the side skins are still not on. Yeah. You can see there's a lot of mess in that particular area, but we're gonna we're gonna get rid of it. Promise. So, Pinky promise. Pinky promise. All right. Starting from the back and moving our way up. So we added those wires in the back. You can see the strobe and the servo, trim servo. Um, we made sure they don't interfere with the elevator, which is a good thing because the first time we routed them, they did. Then we have our... Um, Wait, there, there's also the this thing here. That's oh, the yes. VOR connector. The VOR bulkhead connector. Yes. Yeah. Then we um, have the magnetometer down here. We added the connector to that because it's a little bit of a pain if you have to do it through the inspection hatch. Um, then we have all of our antennas. So here's where our ELT will go, up through there. Um, thank you very much to Scott for supplying us the bracket to finish that. Yay, Scott. Right. Yay, Scott. For the naysayers who say our magnetometer is next to the rudder cables and they're made of the metal, the Garmin connector is also made out of steel. Yeah, we, we so. put a magnet to it. It is very, very magnetic, so that's annoying. Um, next antenna, we have the COM2 antenna here. Um, custom brackets. Custom bracket. And then it sits in the inspection hatch right here. And then the inspection hatch goes over all that. And then we have COM1 up here with the, you know, off the shelf bracket that tap supplies. One thing to remember is ensuring that whenever we take the antenna off, somehow secure the wire so it doesn't pop inside the fuselage because otherwise it would be pretty hard to get it out. So you can see we have all this nice lacing here trying to protect the, the cable and you can see down we here. We opted out not using the zip ties. Sorry. Yeah, zip ties we decided not to use because lacing looks prettier. Here's our ELT. Here's where we've mounted our ELT. As far aft as practical is what the regulations say so we've mounted it right underneath our parachute box. So there's standoffs on inside the parachute box between the bottom of the parachute box and where the parachute will sit. So we figured it's perfect space for the rivet butt heads on the ELT. Note that it's shielded from the rocket exhaust. That will be parachute rocket exhaust right here. It's shielded by this reed. Here's where the yeah, rocket exhaust would go. Right on there, yeah. All right. We've also been careful to route the ELT wire away from the push rod. That's right there. Yes. Yeah, working our way up. Here's our headphone and microphone jacks. We've added 3D printed insulation grommets between this rib and the headphone jack so that we minimize noise. And, and also they don't move around. See, yeah. they, they stick pretty well. Standard ones don't, they move around. Uh, now we have all of our wiring going here. The way we split it up is that the high energy wires, like the noisy wires, you know, the strobe, the ELT, a bunch of other stuff, they go on that side. On this side, we have all our sensitive wires. So we have all of the audio wire, the magnetometer wire, the uh, radio wires, all of that goes together. So now we all go forward. Can see we've also added this wire is GPS wire. Oh, it's yes, not it's GPS. not like we for, forgot to, to, to and the interior yeah. lighting as well. Yes, so they're gonna go into canopy. We've also added our seat belts. You can see that like the seat belts attached to that bracket over there, and once you have the side skin on here, it's really difficult oh, to get yeah, that yeah. bracket on. This is the seat belt. Yeah. Goes over here, seat belt, and like these rear seat belts, uh, these will stay. We also add these middle ones and we'll have to take them out because the center console sits here, but that's that's okay, we'll, we'll take them out. Uh, moving forward, the controls is another really big thing you should do and they gave us like a lot of trouble. So we, Peter, <laughs> rejiggered the But controls. not in the same way that they give builders trouble. We didn't have to send any bushings down. Ours actually went together pretty well. Yeah, ours fit together pretty well, but like we had a hard time getting these sticks parallel and with like equal range of motion. That was really, really tricky, Peter, right? Yes, yeah, so manual says that you should have the control stops. So you see like both 
on both sides there are these uh, brackets like that bracket is the bracket where control the the stopping bushings is supposed to be hit against um so manual says that there should be one bushing on each side and that's wrong uh, or rather if you do that then your sticks are gonna end up um not tilting to the same angle on both sides so rather what you should do apparently and that that was shout out to claude that was his idea what you should do is put both bushings on one side so that way you ensure that see like this right now right one hits and right now left one hits uh and that way the uh deflection to the left and deflection to the right are the same and then you use the control um the aileron control link to make sure that the sticks deflect the same angle we also installed the eye bolts the outer eye bolts for that would go into inside the wings for ailerons right now because it's going to be much harder to install them later and the autopilot here's the autopilot you can see aileron autopilot right there uh we put the control stops for autopilot they're actually completely unnecessary because autopilot is acting on the same sort of uses the same stops but once you install them you got to make sure that they like that the autopilot doesn't touch them before the main control stops so you, as you can see like it gets pretty close but it doesn't actually touch in either position yeah moving forward oh hang on we also forgot the uh, this, this stuff autopilot? the yeah. rear yeah Oh yes, so this autopilot was, was a bit tricky because one thing I didn't realize is that Garmin wants to control the servo, the trim servo. So we actually brought out the trim servo to this box, broke out all the wires and gave the power wires to the Garmin so that he could control it and move the position wire forward. So you got, we've got our trim pause wire. We're moving it forward all the way to the panel so that we, way we have the trim position. Not entirely sure Garmin autopilot pronouns are he. Um, <laughs> he is. Yeah, I think it can go <laughs> by there. it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that Garmin can control it. Uh, yeah, so moving on forward, another big thing was wire routing. So we decided to opt for Teflon fuel lines, um, and we also went a and eight fuel line. Oh, sorry. A and eight, yeah. So we opted for a size higher than maybe we should have. We we were being conservative at the time, and we're worried about vapor locks. So we're like, let's get A and eight wires or fuel lines, and let's make them Teflon, so we don't have to do this five year rubber replacement program that like all of the rubber ones have to do. Again, we found out later we could have used silicon rubber fuel lines, but N we didn't nylon, I think. Nylon. Oh, silicon rubber or yeah. nylon covered Teflon? Yeah. yeah, but we didn't. We, we got we got, got stainless steel and a Teflon lines. That's what we did. So we had to route them. All the fuel. All the fuel. So we had to route them in such a way. You see this or Ouroboros of uh, of fuel lines. We had to to route them so they don't interfere with the sides of the fuel selector. On the one hand, you can see we rotated the fuel selector many times trying to find an no, optimal it's fitting. only just, just one so yeah. in our configuration it's rotated like 45 degrees from vertical yes so basically that's where this next set of holes yes yeah, so through. it would be where is it? well anyway, anyway yeah so it would had, be rotated 45 yeah. degrees from vertical if we had to do this again i'm not sure i would have gone with a and a teflon stainless steel hoses that's that's what we did so here we are um, but in that case, we have to route them away from all sorts of wires. So you see, this is the bundle of wires that comes from like the left and the right wings together. And there's all sorts of stuff there, right? There's like your, your lights, there's your fuel tank sensor wire, which I forgot about the first time, but remember the second time. Um, there's your, uh, what else besides the lights, Peter? Just well, we lights? Oh, pito heat. Pito um, heat, lights. On this end? Oh, yes. Pito heat taxi light, landing light, a lot of stuff. We also routed the joystick wires through the middle here. So we've got these nice joystick connectors and Claude pointed out there's actually a hole underneath here for the joystick wires. So you can like route your wire through there, have a connector and like attach it all to the bottom. So yeah, we also routed our joystick wires through the center as well as our flat motor. So all of that goes into this bundle and has to be routed away from the fuel line so they don't rub and spark. The transponder wire should also be kept quite a bit separate. So we also uh, yeah, ground out this, this hole and the bottom hole a little bit so we could fit the transponder uh, wire, bulkhead connector and all the nuts. Yeah. 
We've added this bracket here just to help support all of this stuff. So again, it's not running on the bottom. So now we have this like two level system where our fuel lines are on the bottom, the rudder cables are in the middle and these wires are on top. And hopefully like they're all spatially separated and don't interfere. Uh, what we're planning to do with these side bundles, um, initially we were thinking of putting them on the floor until we realized there's no way for them to get out of the floor. So now what's going to happen is we're going to attach the side skins and the interior side skins and these will go between the side skin and the interior side skin and route their way back to the panel. That's the, that's the, the vision. I think that's everything we did. Is there, is there anything else, Peter? Well, just also all the all the control uh, push rods, so like all the elevator yes, push rods, true. all the aileron push rods, all, all the autopilot push the rods, like all that is supposed to be in the finishing kit, and it's yeah. a pain in the ass to do them even in uh, you know this stage. I can only imagine how hard it would have been if you do it actually during in the finishing kit. Honestly, everything here was a pain in the ass even at this stage. I I think like you could do it later, but. It's gonna be it's gonna be even harder. Um, one thing that really helped us, and I'll put a link in the description, is Craig Mayman put together this like really nice list of things that he did in the fuselage and like the order in which he did them. So I've been like going through and like checking off things to make sure that like we 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 went through we didn't miss anything. And so it was really helpful because it has all sorts of things that you might miss. For example, the seat belts. The ELT, backing plates of various sorts, so I'll, I'll put a link to that, but just printing it out, checking it through before you put the side skins on, really helpful. Thanks, Craig. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's it. Hope you viewers are getting along well with your build, and uh, thank you for watching. Have a good night.